Hi everybody, I'm Dr. Girasoli with the Amateur Radio and Engineering Club here at the Norwich Free Academy. I'm very excited to share this moment with you. Uh, for the first time, Norwich Free Academy is going to talk with an astronaut. While the astronaut is in the International Space Station, it speeds overhead uh, of NFA. So what's going to happen is we are going to call uh, the astronaut on the space station. The space station has a call sign of NA1SS. Our call sign here at NFA is W1HLO. So the astronaut, Dr. Josh Casada, he's going to be listening for our call sign of W1HLO. And then when he hears us, he will respond back, and then we can start the question and answers. Um, so what we have up on the roof of the Cranston building are two robotic antennas. And these antennas are going to be always pointed at the International Space Station as it flies overhead. So, at first, we're just going to be calling and calling and calling for you. We're not going to hear anything just yet. But once the International Space Station gets over the horizon enough where our antennas can pick up the International Space Station, we'll be able to have our conversation. If all goes well. So now we're going to start calling NA1ISS. Thanks to Clark. Go ahead, Clark. NA1SS, NA1SS, NA1SS. This is W1HLO. NA1SS, NA1SS, NA1SS. This is W1HLO. It's going to take a couple of minutes. NA1SS, NA1SS. This is W1HLO. NA1SS, NA1SS, NA1SS. This is W1HLO. NA1SS, NA1SS, NA1SS. This is W1HLO. NA1SS, NA1SS, NA1SS. This is W1HLO. This is the NFA Ham Radio Club. How are you doing today? It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. He's very low on the horizon right now, so that's why he's really faint. So hold on a second, okay? Okay, call him again. NA1SS, NA1SS, NA1SS. This is W1HLO. How are you doing today? NA1SS has you loud and clear, doing great. Welcome aboard the International Space Station, Norwich Free Academy. I'm excited to talk to you. I know we only have a little bit of time, so I'll try to keep my answers brief. Over. Okay, we have our first student here to ask you a question. Hello, my name is Christopher. Uh, what was the journey like for you to become an astronaut, and is there anything you would recommend to someone aspiring to become one? I've had an interesting journey in that I've been able to do a lot of different things. In college I studied physics and then in grad school I studied uh, high energy physics and then I became a pilot in the Navy and then eventually a test pilot and then I started my own company um, and then I got to be an astronaut and I'll tell you what, I've always done things that I found very interesting. So my one recommendation is do things you love and it sure beats working for a living. Over. Hi, my name is Nick, and I was wondering if you could tell us how the ISS is resupplied and what kind of things get delivered to you. Hey, Nick. Uh, well, we have cargo vehicles that come up every so often, every two, three months or so. We actually have one plugged into the bottom of the space station right now, and uh, we have a couple different providers who do that. We can also put some resupplies on uh, the actual crewed vehicles and bring stuff up there, too. But they typically are food and, and supplies and also experiments and also some of the hardware we need either to make the space station better. Uh, we put out some solar rays recently uh, or even sending some stuff back that needs to get worked on like the spacesuits that we use. Over. Hello, my name is Serge. What experiments are going on in the ISS? Hey Serge, we have a ton of them going on, anywhere from 200 to 400 at any one time. Uh, my favorite ones, of course, are the physics ones. We've got a handful that are on top of the space station or inside of the space station. But we've also got a bunch of biology and uh, solid 
state physics, as well as uh, some chemistry and uh, material science. It's amazing. Over. Hello, my name is Logan. Are you concerned about disuse osteoporosis, and what do you do in space to prevent it? Well, it wasn't until you brought it up, Logan. <laughs> so it is something we do think about up here, and that's uh, why we work out as much as we do. We actually uh, do the equivalent of lifting weights. They're not actually weights. We're pulling against a vacuum. But we do need to stress our bones to keep them healthy and uh, keep our muscles healthy as well. Over. If you get sick in space, what would you do? Hi, Abriel. Well, I would uh, probably ask my buddy Frank, who happens to be a doctor, um, but we are all trained uh, in medicine if we need it. Um, so we've got all the supplies up here we need for most of the uh, significant things we would have to deal with. And if it's even worse than that, we can always come home and uh, get ourselves home in probably four to six hours. Over. Hi, my name is Michael. How do you use the bathroom in space? Very carefully, Michael. Uh, everything here in space uh, kind of takes off. When you open up a bag, everything kind of goes floating out. So you can imagine in the bathroom, uh, you need to be very careful. But we've got an amazing system here, uh, and it uh, once you get used to it, it works really, really well. Over. Hi, my name is Matthew. What does your routine look like on the space station from when you wake up to when you go to sleep? Hey, Matthew, it's different every single day. Some days uh, we wake up uh, and we start doing experiments on ourselves, like taking blood. Sometimes we start working on the space station and either doing things to help maintain it or make it better. Uh, but the days typically start around 7.30 in the morning and they end around 7.30 at night. And uh, sometimes we even get weekends. Over. Hello, my name is Nicholas. What does the food you eat taste like? Hey, Nicholas, we've got a variety of uh, different bags of food. Uh, they're MREs, like we use in the military, uh, So, but they're uh, really good MREs. But I will tell you, at this point, after uh, doing it for four and a half months or so, it's all kind of starting to taste the same. Over. <laughs> Hello, my name is Caridwin. How do you keep in contact with your friends and family? Hi, Caridwin. Uh, well, we have email up here. Uh, we can make phone calls using our uh, laptops, so we can actually use an IP phone. Uh, and sometimes we can even do video calls. Of course, we need to have satellite coverage to do that. We don't have constant satellite coverage, so sometimes we end up uh, having phone calls cut short. Over. Hello, my name is Kylie. What were the hardest things to get used to while in space? Hey, Kylie, I think it is that nothing stays where you left it. Uh, you can go ahead and uh, put something in a bag, but if there's anything else in that bag, when you open it up, everything goes everywhere. Uh, or sometimes you think that you just set something down just for a second, you turn around and it's gone. It'll eventually come back, but it doesn't take you a while to find it. Over. Hello, my name is Haley. How do you stay clean in space? Haley, it's hard. Uh, what I've done, because we can't take showers, is what I do is I take warm water and put it on the bottom. The antennas are slim in here, by because of surface tension. There's no gravity to pull it off. So I can kind of put a big bubble of water on my back and then shake my body a little bit and I've got my own little Over. Hello, my name is Henry. What is What was okay. the most dangerous thing you've experienced in space? Hey, Henry. Uh, well, first of all, we've got layers upon layers of safety uh, built in. And so if any one system fails, there's uh, several other systems to back it up. And we also have an amazing team on the ground that always has a plan B, C, D, and E, and probably beyond that. Uh, so I like to think that it isn't dangerous. The most dangerous thing I can imagine is not having any options. And we've always got options up here. Over. Hi, my name is Aureli. Have you gotten taller in space? And if so, has it caused any pain? Hey, Aureli. Uh, I think so. I think I've gotten a little taller. I'll find out as soon as I get back, because when I left, my wife and I were the exact same height. So I want to take her out to dinner as soon as I can, so I can be just a little bit taller. Uh, but that will only last for a couple weeks, and then I'll be back to her exact height. Uh, it did cause a little bit, a bit of pain at the beginning, maybe the first three or four weeks as my spine kind of straightened out a little bit, but now I feel just great. Over. Um, hello, my name is Brandon. Is it possible for things to collide with the ISS, and what would you do if, it, if that happened? Brandon, it's possible, but we've got a team of people all around the planet making sure that it doesn't happen. Uh, we track all kinds of things that could be a problem, and if it looks like it's going to be couple months and 
so we can sometimes just coordinate a boost that we would do to move the space station just enough so it doesn't even come close. Over. Hello, my name is Simon. What do you do on your free time? Hey Simon, well I'll be honest, it's tough not to spend your free time looking out the window. That planet that you're on and that I can't wait to get back to is absolutely gorgeous. Um, and there is no part of it that isn't beautiful. Uh, but then uh, if, I, uh, if, the, if the window is busy, then uh, maybe I can make a call or do some email. And we actually watch movies up here too. We've got a big screen that we hang over a hatchway on the weekends and we can watch movies and sometimes we can watch tackle football. Over. Hello, my name is Hannah. What does it feel like entering and leaving space? Hannah, I'll have to get back to you on what it feels like to leave space. This is my first mission, uh, but we've been up here for four and a half months and we'll be uh, coming home in just about a month or so. Uh, but coming into space, it is quite an experience when the, that rocket uh, shuts off and it's done its job and you just start floating in your seat. You realize uh, that we're doing some pretty amazing things when people all work together and uh, try to accomplish the same goal. Over. Hi, my name is Alejandro. Has being an astronaut changed your views about society and our planet? Hey Alejandro, I would say uh, being in space has probably reinforced uh, ideas that I had about society uh, and about our planet. You know, I've always thought that sometimes uh, humans will create reasons to uh, not get along. And really at a fundamental level, we're all on the same team. We're all trying to get the same thing done. And we need to protect this planet and, uh, and preserve our spacecraft right here in the universe. It's amazing and we can't afford to mess it up. Over. Hello, my name is Kristen. What is your favorite and least favorite part about being on the ISS? Hey Kristen, well I think probably my least favorite is the stuff going everywhere. Uh, although that, I'll be honest, at the same time that's kind of my favorite because that doesn't happen on the ground. Uh, that you just set something somewhere and it just starts to float away. Um, but uh, I'll tell you, um, my favorite thing to do is to just float through the space station when I forget something in another module. It's a little bit like being in your house where you forget something and you think, oh man, I, have, I can't believe I've got to go all the way over there. Thirty seconds left. Anyone SS, thank you for the contact. This is W1HLO. Anyone SS, thank you for the contact. This is W1HLO. Good job, everybody.